Molto piacere di essere qua con voi. How, grazie. How neutrality shapes our happiness. I want to share with you my personal story dealing with the family history of suicides, schizophrenia, depression, mental illnesses, or brain disorders, to be more accurate. And it's a story of struggle to find happiness and personal freedom, a story to remove stigma, destructive self-judgment, and self-sabotage. But before I even get there, I want to start with a simple question. It's your mind full or are you mindful right now, at this moment? Think about it. Because a mind full is a mind filled with thoughts, anticipation, stress. Being mindful, on the other hand, is having a mind that is alert but serene. It's kind of putting the mind in neutral in a position where we observe without judgment. So I would like you all to be neutral. Do you think you can be neutral for the next few minutes? Yes? I, I will take that as a resounding yes. Wow. Being neutral, that's a human dilemma. Because we are trained to seek the truth, and to form a definite opinion about everything we know, we believe we know, or even things we know we don't know. That's how we are. Complicated. Hmm? Every one of us here is programmed not to be neutral. You, definitely you, lady. <laughs> you as well, and me. Most of the time, we are obsessed with being right instead of being happy. We get betrayed by our own mental maps and rigid mindsets. And our brain, our brain can resist letting go of an unanswered question. Our ego always wants to be right, allegedly is acting on our own behalf. So some questions arise. How can we be neutral about our own stories? How could you be neutral about your pains, struggles, and failures? Well, neutrality is the key to a mindful, healthy, and happy life. I was born in Cuba, communist Cuba. Most of my beliefs were instilled by the Cuban government. My domestication process, what we call education, was very ideological and political. Propaganda polluted my mind since early childhood. I grew up looking for answers about the disparities between the official literature and the reality of my own life. Religion was banned. My mom ordered my grandmother not to bring me to church anymore because the system wouldn't allow it. So I was a very worried child, too attached to my mental reasoning, fears, and lack of neutrality. And of course, I think that at a point, I felt that I was very constipated, and I will explain that <laughs> later. I will, because these are my parents getting married, no smiles. Come on, mom, dad. What about smile to say goodbye to the crowd on the way to the honeymoon? Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> no smiles either. The wedding night was hell. My parents divorced when I was four. So sometimes I say to myself, well, you were born out of a constipated love. But love is love, after all. And yes, indeed, I was a constipated child that had not smiled for many years. 
My mental cluttering, fears, and lack of neutrality brought me to what I call chronic constipation, stitichezza. <laughs> but not stomach constipation. I'm talking about emotional, psychological, and spiritual constipation. The ones you cannot cure with a laxative. So, let's think about what can I tell you that happened during those years. What I remember is that when I was 15, my life felt disgraceful and contradictory. Yes, I suffered from panic attacks, nightmares, hallucinations, fear of losing my sanity, and low self-esteem. Bullies branded me as weak and weird. And yes, I was a bit weird, I have to be honest. This is me at 15. My grandma joked about this picture saying that it should be placed as a label on sugar jars to scare away cockroaches. <laughs> she was a lovely lady, and she loved me so much, and I loved her, and too. <laughs> so, but the reality that I want to tell you today is that we all have our own stories, but we should detach from that story. Yes or no? A little bit. So, how can I eliminate so many years of mental scarcity? How does one reprogram and rewire one's thoughts toward abundance and joy? Which laxative could I use to cure my metastasized emotional and spiritual constipation? When I was 15, during those years, I had to pay visits to my father to the psychiatric hospital. He was hospitalized for schizophrenia. He looked like a zombie, inexpressive and numb from electroshock sessions. And one day, when I went to visit him, and this is for you, Papa, I asked God for a miracle, a divine intervention. Yes, I could not go to church, but I kept God in my heart. And it was a God of love and compassion, a God with no exclusivity of any church or religion, simply a God of infinite and unconditional love. I begged for my sanity because I didn't want to grow up and end up like my father. And that was hard because it felt like a treason to him. I could hear tormenting voices. I would wake up sweating and agitated from nightmares. So my mom took me to the psychiatrist, and I was medicated with antidepressants, a pill a day for more than a year, because by then I didn't know better. Now I'm meditated instead of medicated. So years, years went by. And finally, leaving Cuba became an option, and I took it. At 28, I was starting my new life in Canada as a political refugee. I was very well educated in Cuba, but an emotional, illiterate, desperate, young, overweight guy looking for answers to so many unanswered questions. And at that moment, my encounter with neutrality began not out of desperation. No, I got a little bit of inspiration of being in the world and conquer my fears. So I want to tell you that neutrality or mindfulness is the way to go to reshape our happiness. Sometimes we humans are too invested in our own dramas, Spanish telenovelas, soap operas. 
blurring our capacity to free ourselves from what I call self-inflicted optional suffering. Why? Because you should know this. Pain plus resistance equals suffering. Neutrality has enabled me to separate facts from fiction. In a story of victimhood, I kept reproducing in my own mind. It was like a mental picture blown out of proportion. So when I decided to accept my heritage and to make peace with any genetic predisposition I got, fear became my best ally instead of my worst enemy. So mindfulness is actually the pursuit of conscious neutrality. Because as a journalist, I know this, everyone wants to be happy. But education or domestication creates beliefs that turn into brain tattoos, hard to find in the space of our subconscious mind. Attachments lead to suffering. And we create, we create attachments to our past stories, beliefs, mental maps. And we are not able to see how trapped we are in this vicious cycle. By cultivating neutrality, mindfulness, we'll gain the wisdom to explore and heal our wounds. And this is the juice. This is where the magic happens. Listen to this. While I was doing this, I discovered that I didn't have to feel sorry for my father for not having one arm. I discovered that my father had lost an arm as a kid for a greater good. Why? Because if he had kept his left arm, he would have been successful at committing suicide. So God took his arm so I could receive from him the gift of life. And here I am, grateful, grateful for everything I have lived. And of course, you can tell me, we can't be neutral all the time. For sure, there are times to stand up and speak out. There are times to set boundaries. There are times to claim your rights and times to fight for human dignity and noble causes. But still, you can do that in a mindful and conscious way. I have found inner peace by lowering the volume of the limiting voices in my head. Because we spend too much time trying to change the outside instead of improving and optimizing our inner self, our being, the interior. So in my 15 years working as a journalist for CNN and Espanol, I interviewed hundreds of amazing individuals from all walks of life, and I studied them. And I know for sure that they all achieved success by thinking and perceiving reality in a conscious and mindful state. So I want to share with, three, with you three ideas on how to become happier and more successful based on personal experience. First, I want you to be aware. Constantly observe yourself. At a conscious level, yeah, it's like having a drone. Because at a conscious level, you are an observer, a powerful one. You are a creator, an ingenious one. Second, be like bamboo. Firm, empty inside, 
and flexible. Bamboo forests bend together to face the winds and to survive any kind of weather, and flexibility will help us navigate the river of uncertainty. And third, smile. You will remember my name, smile, Ismail. Smile for no particular reason. Would you rather be right instead of happy? That's your choice. But if you want to have a peaceful life, start exercising your smile today. Smiling will become then natural. Smiling is actually the laxative for emotional and spiritual constipation. So transformation is possible. Human mental reengineering is possible. If I'm standing here smiling in front of you in Rome today, it's because detachment and neutrality have helped me to turn scarcity into infinite possibilities. Victimization into mindful exponential leadership and fear into freedom. We all are masters of our destiny. And I have a dream. And it's a dream of a world free of emotional and spiritual constipation. Thank you so much. Thank you.